When making games with Godot, one thing that beginners love to do is to place a camera node inside of the player scene, just like the one I have here. The reason behind this is very simple. They just want to have a camera that's always on top of the player. Here I have the top-down shooter game that we made in a different tutorial, but you don't have to watch that one to follow along with this one. So like I said, the reasoning is simple. Have a camera that's following the player, and this approach is going to work, as you can tell, but there's a problem with this. When the player loses the game, you might want to delete the player scene. And if you delete the player scene, you're going to delete the camera as well. Look what happens when the player gets deleted here. The camera is going to snap back into the starting position. Ideally, we don't want that to happen. We want the camera to stay where it's at when the player loses, and when we respawn the player, that's when we want to bring the camera back onto the player, onto the starting position. So we can fix this easily by using a node called Remote Transform 2D. Let's see how this works. In the player scene, first of all, I'm going to delete the camera, and I'm going to create a Remote Transform 2D. This node is extremely simple, actually. It's just going to take its own position and it's going to give it to a different node that we can set using the remote path here. So let me just show you um, how this is going to work in the most basic sense. So let's go back into the world and inside of the world, I'm actually going to create a sprite node. We'll give this sprite node the Godot icon and we're just going to make it a little bit more smaller and just leave it in the starting position like that. And then we're going to right click on the player, click on editable children so that we can access the remote transform 2D that's in the player. And while I have it selected, I'm going to left click hold, drag the sprite 2D into the remote path here. And once I do that, you can see that the sprite immediately snapped on top of the player and the scale changes I made are actually gone as well. So why is that? First of all, the remote transform is going to give its own position to that node we specify here. So the fact that the sprite just jumped onto the player makes sense, but it's not only the position actually. The remote transform 2D, if you click on it, is going to give its transform properties to the node that you specify. So that includes rotation, scale, skew, everything. That's why the scale changes we made to the sprite are actually gone. So let's try playing the game now. You will see that when I'm rotating the player, now the sprite is also being rotated. Also, when I move the player, the sprite is also being moved. So I use the sprite here just to demonstrate the fact to you that whatever we give to the remote transform, it's going to stay on top of the player. So this is also going to be the case with the camera. So now we can go ahead and delete this sprite and then we can create a camera here and then we'll click on the remote transform and give it the camera instead. Now when we play the game, you will see that we have a camera that's always on top of the player, but the difference is when the player is deleted, the camera stays where it's at because it's not actually in the player scene. The player scene is deleted, that's fine, and we leave the camera at the final position of the player. So that's how the Remote Transform 2D works and how you can use it to create a camera trick like this. The final thing I want to show you here, I don't like using editable children to set the path to the remote transform. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset that, right click on the player, turn off editable children. We're going to go into the script inside of the world here. We're going to create a reference to the camera or we can just right click on the camera and access as unique name, whichever one that you prefer. Let's go into the player. I'm also going to create a reference here. Let's say remote transform. And then we can say remote transform 2D. 
Now we're going to go back into the world scene and inside of the ready function, we're going to set the path. So let's take the player, let's access the remote transform, and then we're going to say remote path. And this is going to be equal to camera dot get path. Just like that. Now, when we run the game, it's going to be the exact same thing, but this time we're setting this from the script, which is going to be a better way to do it, in my opinion. Great, so that is how to create a remote transform 2D node so that you can keep the camera where it's at when the player loses the game. If you liked the video, take a look at this one as well. Also, take a look at the link in the description. See you in the next tutorial.